Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday. Before we get into it, I just wanted to let you know about a video that uh, was shot of me talking at the Ignite Sydney conference the other week. And if you want to see it, click here. You'll be able to uh, jump to that. It's a five minute lightning talk about how I make a full time living on YouTube. Yes, you can watch me make a fool out of myself live on stage in front of 500 people. Beauty. So what we've got today, something incredibly simple, a Genred Decade Resistance Box. That I scored from the auction. I've got two of these, as you uh, saw in previous videos, or you should have seen. How interesting is a box with a bunch of precision resistors and switches? We'll find out. Switch pornography, I think. Let's go. And here it is, the Genred 1433F Decade Resistance Box, 110k uh, total, 10 milliohms resolution. There's the decimal point there, and it can go down to 10 milliohms. And uh, you've seen a previous uh, video uh, on the um, IET Decade Resistance box. This, box. this is about uh, $500 uh, class one, and of course uh, Genred are now owned by IET. So the same company you can still buy this model decade resistance box. It still looks it looks a little bit different, but it's um I well, I'm assuming it's uh, uh pretty much uh, precisely the same technology inside. This one's quite old. I'm not sure of the exact uh, date. And uh, of course, you've got my homemade uh, resistance uh, box here, which you've seen in a uh, in a few uh, previous videos, and it contains uh, various precision resistors in it, well, two precision resistors, they're about $20 each from DigiKey, and they're 0.01% class, same as this uh, one here, this one's actually 0.005%, so this 10k resistor I've got in here is technically, uh, you know, it's like 2 ppm um, class, this is like 5 ppm class, so technically my $20 resistor in here is better than this decade resistance box, which if you want to know the price, if you well, if you have to ask the price, you can't afford it really. Um, we're talking in the uh, many thousands of dollars here for one of these decade resistance boxes. So uh, why, you know, this has got a twenty dollar resistor in it. Uh, it's a little bit better than this, but the trick is getting the contact resistance right in these switches. These just aren't going to be ordinary switches inside here, and we're going to see that in the teardown. So I expect some switch pornography inside this thing we'll find out so let's crack it open oh and by the way this was supposed to be unserviceable as you saw in the uh, previous video it's uh, slightly out of tolerance i showed the uh, spec sheet uh, last time so uh, i expect uh, just to need some uh, contact uh, you know clean some of the contacts in there perhaps and uh, she should be right to go so maybe we'll do that after the teardown we'll take a look at the binding post here and there's a, actually a bit of corrosion on these here and uh, well not surprising uh, considering its age now these aren't just regular binding posts these are actually uh, tellurium copper binding posts to give you a low um, EMF which I've talked about in uh, uh, previous videos you know thermal EMF effects and uh, stuff like that and of course um, they're uh, isolated from the chassis so the individual resistors there you can see them isolated and we've got ourselves a uh, shielding uh, ground terminal as well for the case in case you uh, really want to uh, shield out that noise so um yeah these are uh, probably you know i'd like to replace them but i physically i don't think it's a possible i think inside we'll probably see that it's probably not going to be uh, uh easy to do that and really you know these are top quality um just clean them up a bit and uh, they should be uh, good as gold no pun intended a yeah, bit of a macro shot there for you, uh, binding post aficionado. So yeah, we do have the uh, hole down the bottom down there, so we can use this as a four-wire uh, terminal measurement, of course. Plug your banana plug in the top and then have your sense wire uh, coming out the side. Of course, you have to really do that when you're talking about 10 milliohms resolution here with you know a precision uh, calibration st standard metrology grade box that we've got here. All right, let's crack it open. We've got, uh, looks like three screws here. There's not another one down here, but there's, interestingly, there's a uh, cover plate down here, which looks like it comes off separate, and it's right under the binding post. So, I, pre I uh, some sort of access they've designed in. Ta-da! 
There we go, they've designed in some sort of access to the um, front panel uh, terminal blocks. Not sure why, maybe that's uh, part of the, um, I don't know, uh, calibration, factory calibration of these things or something. have no idea. Actually, on second thought, I think what might be going on here, this is for the user, perhaps. If you've got this thing, maybe, perhaps, uh, mounted in a rack or a system or something, you can um, access the terminals on the back and you can wire it into a system, perhaps. Um, that's, I don't know. That's, I reckon that's a reasonable guess, anyway. And I expect to see some massive switches. These things won't be just your uh, Dick Smith... PCB mount cheapies, let me tell you, there'll be a bit of technology, I'm sure, which goes into a metrology grade switch. Now, oh, 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 the whole thing lifts off. Here we go. You're ready. Ta-da! How interesting is a box with some resistors in it? Oh, <laughs> look at that, folks. Beautiful. Hey, what's going on here? This one looks different to all the others and this is inter it look we don't have I expected these type of axial precision resistors they're uh, like I don't know ah they're a Vichy uh, brand one so I sort of expected that but they're the only type used there the rest are look like wire wound resistors look at that wow like as in, you know, all separately wired and then down on the low order, yeah, these are the low order switches down here, these are the uh, point, these are the 100 milliohm and that's the 10 milliohm. We've got little, I'll show these in great, uh, I'll show these with the uh, macro lens on, zoomed in, of course, in a minute, but uh, yeah, there you go, that's inside a metrology grade decade resistance standard. Beautiful. The wiring... It looks like we have um, silver um, plated wiring, perhaps. Yeah, it looks like. Yeah, silver plated wiring. And, uh, woo, spared no expense. And the contacts, of course, will all be uh, silver plated as well. And, yep, I just looked up the uh, manual for this thing and it uh, boasts a um, silver alloy uh, contacts all throughout this thing to maintain uh, less than one milliohm per decade total per decade brilliant and of course we've got uh, uh, seven decades here so uh, that's less than if with one milliohm per decade that's less than the uh, least significant uh, bit of the lower decade here so and I'm sure they achieve better than that in practice that'd be like a uh, worst case figure so beautiful but um, why is this one different? This is a switch manufactured by Quadtech. There's the part number, um, 0510-9705-01. I'll have to look that up. Individually serial numbered. Um, it's almost as if that is like they've repaired this thing or something and they've replaced that. I mean, there's no reason why this is the um, one, this is the one K, uh, yes, that's the 1K um, st uh, decade there. Why that one needs to be a different type of switch to all the others is is absolutely baffling. So I, I suspect that this has been probably repaired. Um, the good news is, is that I've got two of these, so I can crack the other one open. I might do that very quickly now just to confirm that it looks like, I reckon that, this one's been repaired. Okay, here's the other one. Let's crack it open and yep, ta-da, oh, ta-da, but look at the uh, contacts down here, they have replaced, they have replaced, well these ones don't have the uh, silver contacts on them, these ones have uh, like just uh, bare copper contacts on them, bizarre, I mean the end one here is silver, the end contact there and over there is silver, of course, to when you switch out that decade. But they've decided that they're going to lower the cost, I guess, on these two upper order switches, the 1K and the uh, 10K decades, by not going with the silver contacts on there, the uh, silver alloy contacts, because you don't uh, need them when you're up in that 
sort of uh, range, I guess. They've, they've determined that. So that's interesting. Whereas the other box has still the silver uh, alloy contacts right up on the 100k range. So, man, that is, uh, there's, there's certainly uh, differences between these two units. So here's one individual decade switch up close here. Check out the multiple contacts on there. What's that? Four individual uh, contact pads coming out from there all the way into that switch mechanism. There's a ball here, of course, which if I rotate that, here we go. Nope, oh, they're a bit stiff. Oh, really stiff, these things. Especially when I'm not uh, getting the right angle on there. Oh, that's horrible. I'll uh, give you some uh, switching uh, money shots later. But yeah, they've got the multiple leaf contacts on that thing, which is uh, absolutely fascinating. And these are uh, self-cleaning uh, contacts. Well, they're advertised as uh, self-cleaning contacts. And man, that's just beautiful. It really is. Thing of beauty and a joy forever. That's why these things cost in the uh, thousands of dollars. They don't uh, high volume manufacture these or lots of silver goes into this. These are, they wouldn't be um, silver, it's like solid silver wires. They're like a silver, you know, as they say, a silver uh, alloy. Um, so, you know, either silver plate, heavy silver plating or uh, uh, something like that. Not entirely sure, but it is some form of alloy. And here's a close up of that wiping action with all five sorry four uh, contacts there absolutely beautiful oh look at that you see that there's actually uh, appears to be quite a bit of gunk inside those contacts there you can see it all just uh, sort of wiped off on the right hand side of that contact so maybe that's what's uh, you know this is the uh, ten, this is a hundred milliohm uh, range switch so mate you know these things if they've been sitting in uh, storage for quite some time you really do need to um operate them uh you know quite a few times before they will uh meet their minimum contact resistance uh spec again so yeah um i won't uh, clean these things until i actually do some uh, measurements on them and see if they do actually need to uh be tweaked or not and for you ball bearing aficionados here we go look at that Oh, yeah. Could play with this puppy all day long. And they really haven't mucked around on those uh, solder joints either. They've uh, crimped those over and then uh, really soldered them in place. They didn't bother uh, cleaning up the joints there. I guess they uh, decided they didn't have to. So, yeah, you know, it looks a little bit ugly, but oh, super reliable. You can bet your bottom dollar on it. And there's that uh, wire as well i mean it's a huge diameter absolutely massive diameter and uh so that's some sort of silver alloy uh contact and i it's more silver alloy uh contact in here and i'm assuming uh the same silver alloy uh wiring as well because when you're building these things you know you want this wire um you know this is a metrology grade bit of kit so you really want this uh wire here to be the same material as um as your contacts and uh, everything else, and as your wiping, uh, you know, contacts over here. So, so your actual contact pad, your wipes here, your wiring, all that. You would want that to be the same. Uh, so it's got the same uh, tempco and uh, you know uh, thermal effects. And there are your two uh, input jacks there. And as I uh, suspected, they uh, won't be terribly easy to actually uh, replace those. I wouldn't uh, dare touch them really, uh, probably just uh, leave them in place like that. Now yeah, one of the most uh, surprising things I found in this is not the uh, switch contacts there, you know, over-engineered to the hilt exactly what I expected, but uh, the precision resistors in here, look, they're individually wound like these, and these would have all been, um, well, either, you know, hand or machine assembled, but they're definitely hand tweaked at the end of it. You can tell by the little blobs of solder in there and there's some uh, better ones which will actually show it. This is a very uh, clean one. This is the uh, 10K. So each one of those is uh, 10K. Um, that's a 10K resistor. So they've got a high, very high resistance uh, wire in there. And um, they're, you know, this wire cost a fortune. These things, are, you know, they don't just buy an off-the-shelf resistor. These are all um, hand-made, you know, hand-wound, hand-assembled. 
absolutely incredible. So let's take a look at the, one of the ones that's been uh, tweaked. I don't know how many um, individual wires they've actually got in there. I don't know. Anyone want to get in there and count? There you go. You could be counting that until the cows come home, folks. Look at that. Oh, hundreds of turns. Probably finer than a human hair. Look at that. Now, you can see what looks like um, some sort of, you know, oil or liquid on there. It's not. It's actually a uh, conformal coating. They've done that to actually uh, protect these wires. They've actually uh, probably dipped the whole thing after it was uh, wound. They probably, you know, uh, dipped a lot of it or uh, coated it or brushed it or something like that in an individual process. And then, then they would have had all matching uh, silver alloy wire to wire those into the switch contacts. And the switch and those uh, posts in there, they'd be the same um, silver um, alloy wire as well. Now here's the same winding for the uh, one ohm version. And look, it looks incredibly messy, but someone's gone in there and hand tweaked, all you know, hand soldered and hand tweaked the values in each one of these precision one ohm resistors. Unbelievable. And the 10 milliohm decade, really easy. They've just gone, well, it's exactly that length of resistance wire there. So, you know, we don't have to do anything fancy like we do. And look at the uh, 100 milliohm ones. They're not actually, haven't actually used a wire there. They've actually used a flat uh, resistive uh, strip. I, you know, I'm not even sure what uh, that material, you know, some sort of nichrome or uh, something perhaps, um, some sort of uh, resistance, uh, what, you know, that you typically find in a resistance wire or something like that. It's obviously not just, you know, regular uh, straight copper. And it looks like it's almost been heated up there on the end. It's a different color to say this one over here. So, I, you know, I think each one of these, I think is possibly, uh, you know, individually tweaked to be within spec. Hmm. So that's the one ohm decade down in there. You can see it is really quite a mess. And then we get up into the uh, uh, 10 ohm one here. And, ah, uh, oh, man, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it looks absolutely awful. But, uh, you know, these things are metrology grade. They're individually tweaked to get the absolute best performance. And that's why they cost thousands of dollars. You can't mass produce these things. Like you would think something like that, you know, you'd expect to see come out of some, you know, ham shack done with a plumber's uh, soldering iron. I mean, it, it does not instill a lot of confidence at all, but it works. Metrology grade. Now this is the uh, Quadtech switch. We, we've had bodged inside this, which looks like a, uh, you know, an after, uh, repair. I don't think it was done at the uh, factory. And if we take a look at uh, some of the resistors, there are Vichy, uh, VTAS, is that it? Come on, focus. And the resistors here are a Vichy, uh, 1K, these are the 1K ones, um, 1K0000, exactly like it uh, says on the one in my resistance box, but they're a, uh, well, that, is that a Date code 89813, not sure, um, but it's a VTAS2. I'm assuming that's the model number. I'll have to look it up. And now we want the tolerance on this thing. It's on the other side. And there it is, 0.008%. So not, you know, these individual resistors aren't uh, quite, well, actually they're better, not quite as good as the 10K one I've got in my box. The one I've got in my box that I paid like 20 bucks for is, uh, uh, 0.01 for the 1k. I've got 0.005 for the 10k, but uh, I'm going to see if I can find a data sheet for these things. Oops, I read that uh, slightly wrong. It's actually the uh, VTA52 series, but check out the Vichy uh, foil. They're, these are foil resistors, precision foil resistors, but check out this uh, website. I'll link it below. What I love about this, we'll get into the data sheet, but look at all of the application notes that they've got here. Oh, one after my own heart, seismic seismic instruments for oil exploration and uh, need precision resistors in the analog circuits. They certainly do. I've used many of them over the years because I used to work in the seismic industry. But look at all these uh, fact sheets slash um, application uh, notes. Understanding the risks of uh, ESD, selecting resistors for preamp, amplifier, uh, 
the invention and evolution of the world's most precise resistor. Oh, man, got to read that. And uh, precision uh, centers for four small prototype runs. They got a whole swag of um, uh, interesting little factoids, ultra high precision resistors to be used for secondary standards. Oh, Obsolescence counterfeiting. Ooh, there you go. How to select resistors for precision applications. Ah, oh, transmission data transmission problems. Blah, bulk foil resistors. Yeah, introducing new. Blah, temperature coefficient. All sorts of stuff. Component selection layout strategies for avoiding thermal EMF noise. Wow, this is a little gold mine here, folks. Definitely check out this link and. Uh, have a look at these things. There could be some really interesting stuff in here. And here we go, their bulk metal foil technology as uh, all of these precision resistors are really, we're talking uh, 8 ppm, uh, well 4 ppm uh, class over uh, a limited temperature range from 0 to 60, load life stability 0.0025%. You know, not too dissimilar to uh, my one, which is, where is it? Here it is. Uh, my ones are Vichet as well, 0.005% load life, uh, 2 ppm. Um, you know, these are the uh, $20 ones from uh, DigiKey. And uh, very nice. And if we take a look at, here's how they like trimming. Conceptual illustration, there you go. That's how they interloop capacitance, reduction in series, current path before trimming, and then current path after trimming. They'll trim off... Some of this larger trimming process removes this material from shorting strip area, changing the current path and increasing resistance. So they just get the laser in there and burn that out. Beautiful. That's why these things are very expensive and they can cost 20 bucks for one resistor. Not a problem. And this is going to be fascinating reading the invention and evolution of the world's most precise resistor. The legacy of Dr. Felix Zandman. Who knew? Dr. Zelix Zandman is the man. He's the founder of uh, Vichet Intertechnology. Ooh, didn't know it was Vichet Intertechnology. Oh, sadly he died on uh, June 4th, 2011 at age 84. Oh, what a bummer. But there you go, 1962 to 72. Beautiful. All the history. Definitely worth reading, folks. I love it. Who knew all this stuff was here? I had no idea. Just buried away on... You know, the pay, well, varied away in the uh, Vichet uh, website for these particular resistors. I'm sure it's linked into the other resistors as well, but can't say I've ever uh, come across this before. Facts at a glance. I guess that's what Vichet call their uh, application uh, notes. Neat. But here we go. Component selection layout strategies for avoiding thermal EMF noise. And I've done a uh, tutorial on this, of course, the uh, thermocouple tutorial. And uh, bingo, there you go. Cold junction, hot junction, alloy loop resistance, all that uh, thermal junction stuff, which matters. Design considerations, host of materials, alloys, and, uh, well, if you want to know about uh, low uh, noise, low thermal uh, EMF noise designs, then, uh, whoa, look at that, bulk, there we go. There's some differences between metal strip type, bulk metal uh, foil, which are the precision ones that we've got in here, and I've got in my box, and they're using practically any ones. And then you've got your thick film resistors and then metal strip types. Ah, oh, great data in here, folks. Have a read. And that uh, Quadtech switch, well, they were formerly Quadtech. There they are. They're now Chroma Systems, electrical and medical device testing, instrumentation and systems. So, yeah, I don't know if they uh, actually make switches anymore. Probably not, but they make high pot and safety testers, LCR meters, who the hell knew, megometers and milliometers, and medical systems. <laughs> do you believe it? And then they've got power products as well. They do DC electronic loads. Who knew? Digital mult what? They do digital multimeters. Must be a rebadge, surely. Digital power meters. Ah, uh, no. I'm doubting that they'd actually do anything themselves. Well, not some of those anyway. So that sucker there may not actually be a Quadtech uh, switch after all. They may have sourced it from uh, Quadtech, but yeah, it could be someone else. So if anyone uh, actually knows, then uh, please post it in the comments. All right, let's measure this thing. I've got a uh, four-wire uh, terminal set up here, of course. There we go. I've got the leads going over here and then the uh, voltage sense coming back into here. So we're in four-wire. 
mode, which is the uh, best way to measure this. And we're getting seven odd milliohms there. I mean, I can go down to 10 microohms resolution on this thing, but really we're down in the noise. I've got it all set to uh, zero. Let's see if it's repeatable. It should, oops, oh, it's got it back to front. It's upside down. All the electrons are gonna fall out. This one here is uh, the 10 milliohm one. And there we go, it jumped up by pretty much, bang on. 10 milliohms and it goes back, not a problem. So if I give them all a little tweak there and uh, bring them all back, then we should be reading, yeah, it's still around about, yeah, point uh, triple oh seven or seven, seven, eight milliohms or thereabouts. So there you go, we can uh, bump that up by one and we can go up to all the way up to 10, 10 point, there we go, 10.7, 10 point, that 10.8, um, oh, sorry, 100, you know, 108, uh, and you can bump that up by one, we're 0.1 ohms, beautiful, it's, it's bang on, I mean, you could, oh man, to actually get a proper calibration metrology measurement on this thing, when you send in for calibration, you've got to tweak and dick around, probably have to turn some average in on. I haven't got any average in on here and uh, stuff like that. And, you know, you really have to uh, get it um, quite precise to make this thing work. But, you know, I mean, this is, it, it's bang on. You know, it, it's as good as I can probably measure with my gear here. I could muck around a little bit more, but, you know, as we saw on those uh, calibration reports, this thing was out by like, you know, a, you know, a couple of milliohms or something over spec, or 10 milliohms over spec or something. Crazy. But this thing is, uh, bang on, that's, uh, that's one ohm. There it is. And we can go up to 10 ohms. And we still get that, um, you know, oh, well, we jumped up to 9 milliohms uh, offset now. But geez, you know, I mean, we, it's, you know, it's well within, it's, it's within spec. I think not a problem whatsoever. A hundred ohms is actually a little bit uh, higher. What is that in percentage? I mean, that's only like uh, you know 0.01 percent. So you know, it's still very, very close to uh, in spec. I'd have to get out the full spec and adjust for you know uh, <laughs> aging and all sorts of uh, stuff, but. That's the uh, 1K with those uh, precision uh, with those precision metal uh, foil ones. So it's just, uh, you know, it's just, oh, sorry. No, that one's not. That's the uh, full, that's the 100 iron. This is the 1K. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Well within spec, I think. 10K. Look at that. I mean, to give you an idea how bang on that is, folks, 0.01%, okay, which is pretty much the the uh, accuracy, the basic accuracy of this box. It's, you know, it's a 0.01% class uh, decade box. Pretty much 0.01% of 10K that we've got there, of those 10 resistors in series, okay, is 1 ohm. Like that, that digit there is 0.01%. So this next digit over is 0.001%. Crazy. So look at that. It's settling down now, and we're talking almost 0.0001% on that, that, that last digit. There we go. It's just, you know, I mean, I... <laughs> This is ridiculous, you know, you can tweak and measure and measure the drift on this thing, you know, we're down in the drift of the noise almost, it's just, it's just ridiculous, but there it is. And these resistors, as you saw, were uh, 0 0.008% um, uh, marked, so 0.008% of 10k, we're talking, you know, it should be like 80 here, right? It's This digit right here is, uh, you know, your point, it should be 80 and basically 80 on that display there, uh, 0.8 ohms uh, is 0.008%. And look at that, it's well within that. It's practically bang on. And of course, then you've got to take into account the accuracy of this thing, and then you get into the whole metrology thing, and, you know, it's just it just gets absolutely insane, folks. But you basically can't get any better than that. Quick, I should take a photo that it's bang on 10K. 
And on the 10K here, we're talking uh, 0.002%, uh, you know, well within the specification of this unit. Not a problem whatsoever. Look at that. There you go. I didn't show a close-up of the uh, other box with those uh, what look like uh, copper contacts on the top with the uh, one silver uh, alloy contact at this end. You can see like the uh, grease on there. You see all the grease marks <laughs> on this thing. It uh, certainly hasn't uh, lost its grease, that's for sure. So I'm going to have to uh, spend some more time on these boxes and uh, measure the uh, individual uh, ranges and stuff more closely and uh, compare them with the spec and things like that and take into account my um, HP uh, 3457A accuracy and you know all that sort of stuff and uh, but I don't think I have to uh, clean the contacts um, on this but uh, uh, you know really I shouldn't need to just uh, wipe them a few times because these things have been in uh, stores for quite some time I think because they do have a stores sticker on it there it is stores Ta -da! So, you know, they've been lying, I think they've been lying in the uh, storeroom at the uh, military uh, base for, uh, you know, quite some time and they just need to be operated uh, five or ten times and I, I think uh, we'll find that if we did that, uh, you send them back for a proper, uh, proper calibration uh, check, they'd probably be uh, bang on. But if you did want to clean these yourselves, uh, yourself, um, all you need is some WD-40. And I know what people are going to say, don't you dare spray that magnificent box with that crude WD-40. Well, folks, it's actually the recommended, or one of the recommended, you know, though people will be screaming, oh, you've got to use deoxid and stuff. Well, if you have a look at the advice here, should switch contact cleaning or lubrication be required, as may be indicated by an increase in zero resistance, this may be done by spraying the switch contacts with a conditioning compound such as WD-40. Good old WD-40. Or oh, yes, dioxid from uh, K uh, Laboratories, or, uh, which um, I've heard of, but that's like $25 a bottle at uh, JCAR. So you may as well just use uh, you know, the, uh, the, the deoxid uh, gold stuff, like $25 a bottle. You've got to be kidding me. JCAR are ripping off there. I don't know what uh, price it is in the US, but um, WD-40, uh, that's the recommended thing from, this is the, you know, this is the actual maintenance uh, thing from IET Labs for the 1433. They actually tell you to spray it with WD-40 or Super Lube uh, with PTFA. I haven't heard of uh, that Super Lube uh, stuff, but there you go. You can actually spray this sucker with uh, WD-40. Not a problem. And of course, you've got to have the genuine made in Australia stuff. Beauty. So I'm actually pretty darn uh, happy with this box. So, uh, I th you know, once I check them out, I'm going to uh, keep one. I'll probably, I don't need two of them. Uh, I'll flog one on eBay or something. And look, it's actually, uh, this one's drifted uh, slightly down. You know, it's probably not the drop box drifting. It could be my meter. It could be a combination of both or whatever. And, uh, but if I turn that down, we'll probably see that la least significant digit. Oh, oh yeah, don't, don't touch the wires. Don't touch the sense wires. Whoa, look at that. It goes down to 9K. It basically keeps that least significant, that last uh, least significant digit. Almost. It's pretty impressive. Very impressive box. I really like it. Oh, there we go. Bang on. <laughs> no, it went up a little bit. Bang on to 6K there. Five. Oh, look at that. Oh, folks. Pornographic. Really is. Love it when a plan comes together. 2K. Oh, we've uh, increased a uh, digit resolution there on our meter because uh, our meter... Uh, just jumped up. You'll know that's the uh, range in there. So we just gained ourselves an extra uh, extra digit there. So here it is. There we go. And double eight. So we're getting what looks like a large account, but it's uh, the same as before. Ah, beautiful. It really is. I love it. Look at that. Spot on. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. That's uh, it's not just a box, well, it is a box with some switches and resistors, but they're pretty interesting resistors and they're pretty interesting switches. I'm sure you'll agree. And uh, if you've got any uh, more info on the exact uh, alloy types and uh, things like that, then please uh, leave it in the comments or jump on over to the EV blog forum. That's the place to discuss it. And if you like Teardown Tuesday, please give it a big thumbs up. Catch you next time.